baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. 16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6.3-6. 6, 3 -6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew 24 and 1. God has answered something for me that has been in the back of my mind almost since the very time that I came to Christ. Something that has been there just trying to find an answer to this what was to me a dilemma. I pondered it over the years and I believe God has talked to my heart. I want to share something with you the Lord has given me this week. Matthew 24 and 1 And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and His disciples came to Him for to show Him the buildings of the temple. Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily, I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. 30th verse. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Can you say amen? Amen. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves. Ye know that summer is nigh. 35th verse. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. 42nd verse. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man coming. He could come right now while I'm reading this scripture. Right now, right now, right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Oh, Jesus. You wouldn't be expecting him to come while I'm reading, would you? I'm telling you, the blast of the trumpet could come right now. Jesus could come. 
while we're reading the Scripture. Sinner, you need to get right. Backslider, you need to come home. Saint, you need to get fired up. We need to get on the firing line. Who then is faithful? Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Everybody say this with me. To give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day, when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm speaking today upon this thought of God knows, but He's not telling. Why? It's a long title. Brother Spencer just put on there, God knows. But my extended title is, God knows, but He's not telling. Why? This is something that I have often wondered. Was there more to it than just being ready? Being ready is the number one principle. But there's something else behind all of this. God knows. He ain't going to tell us when he's coming. Why? Why? We're going to answer that in just a few minutes. God's in this place. You ready to see somebody get the Holy Ghost? I got chills all over. Aren't you glad you come to the house of the Lord? How many feel like David? I was glad when they said unto me. Come on, church is uplifting. Come on, church gives you direction. Church is encouraging. Keep clapping your hands. Brother Lyman, come and pray. God is in this place. Let's all pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. That is in this place that we feel right now, God. Lord, let some life, God, be changed in this place today. God, let your good word, Lord, find a place in our heart today, God. Lord Jesus, help the church, God, to feel the urgency of the hour that we are in right now, Lord God. Begin to do your work, oh God. Set men and women free, God. Break the chains of darkness, Lord. Break the chains that hold men and women, God. Do your work quickly, Lord God. Touch men and women, I pray, Lord. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Please, if you will, now before you're seated, if you will. Parents, please watch over your children. We've been having a lot of going in and out during some of these services, and I'm afraid it takes away from the impact of God's Word. We need to give honor to God. I don't preach long on Sunday afternoons, but I do want to fulfill the will of God. Amen. And I want people to hear the good Word of God. So, children, I want you to be still. Amen. And I want us to take our seats and give God our undivided attention. Before you're seated one more time, clap your hands to the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. There are three kingdoms that are going to be profoundly affected at the coming of our Lord and Savior. Now, I realize to some that you may not have considered this, and to others maybe you have considered it in depth. And to those of you that have not thought of it, I would like to somehow, maybe possibly by God's help, to turn on that switch within your spirit to quicken something within your heart concerning eternity with God or without God. 
And then to those of you that have thought this through, maybe only that we are enumerating some things. Going back over again, possibly bringing out maybe some areas of that that you've not considered. But according to Scripture, when the trumpet sounds, there are going to be three kingdoms that are going to go through some tremendous transition. One of them is the kingdom of Satan. I'm telling you, leading up to the coming of Jesus Christ, and at that very imminent moment when He comes, and shortly thereafter, there's going to come a shaking within that world. And then within the kingdom of humanity, there's going to be a diminishing of its numbers. Because the Bible said, they that are in the graves are coming out that are ready to meet the Lord. And we which are alive and remain, we're going to be caught up to meet Him in the air. There's going to be a bunch of people going to leave this old world. Praise God. And then, as I see it in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the Apostle Paul, pinning these words on the inspiration of the Spirit, said there is a celestial body, and then there is a terrestrial body. Now, he was talking about the rapture of the church. Possibly I'll read some scriptures out of that in the next little while. But Paul, talking about the coming of the Lord, said, I want you to understand this. You ask with what body that people are going to come out of the grave and from death. He said, I want you to know you're sown in this old body, this corruptible body, but you're going to be raised in incorruptible. You put the body in natural, but it's going to come out spiritual. And in the context of that, he said there is a celestial body and there is a terrestrial body. That celestial body consists of angels, archangels, angels that do the bidding of God. I'm telling you, you can't even begin to imagine if I have the power to pull that silver cord and roll back that veil and that mist of that other world, you would see angels all over this place right now. They're doing the bidding of God. They're here. They're in movement right now. They're here to bless and to be a blessing. Hallelujah. But just as sure as there's God's angels, there's demons that will do everything they can to keep you from hearing the proclaimed word of the living God that is able to save your soul. I don't know who you're going to join up with, but I made up my mind. I'm going to join with the angels. The glory of God. Praise God! Praise God! Amen, amen, amen. These three kingdoms are going to go through a phenomenal transition and changing of the atmosphere within their own world. Now, in the midst of this, I have have asked myself over and over again, why is it that God has never distinctly said when He would come. Now, maybe you didn't catch it here when I read to you out of the book of Matthew. There were two parts that God's disciples asked of Him. Said, oh, we want to know, when are you coming? And what shall be the signs of your coming? These may seem to blend together, but no. They are two distinct questions. Number one, these men wanted to know the day and the hour. Please tell us, when are you going to come back again. Then number two, when can we have the signs of your coming? He made such a proclamation on that day, I still hear it ringing as a bell from a chime hanging high upon a steeple in a church. It's strong in this place. The Lord said, no man shall know of the hour of the day. Only the Father shall know. Only the Father shall know. Oh my. That almost doesn't seem fair, does it? Let me tell you a little bit about this. God knows. God knows the exact moment. It's already set. It's already circled, my friend. You might as well understand this. I don't care what the devil or the Antichrist or anything in this earth tries to do. It will not impede or keep back the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing. Nothing. The angel standing there on that day when Jesus went up in the clouds said to those disciples, Why stand ye here gazing up in the heavens? That same Jesus that you see going away, He is coming back in a like manner. Hallelujah. He's going to step out of the balconies of glory. All those fleecy clouds are going to be stepping stones for Him. And He's coming down to bring us up to meet Him in the air. 
God, that ought to excite you. My God, that ought to excite you. That ought to thrill your soul. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Something that momentous and something that impacting. Why would God in His mercy and grace tell us this shall happen? But only I, only I and I alone. Friend, the angels already knew by now when He says it, don't argue with Him. The two-thirds that stayed said, when he says it, don't argue with him. Because we saw Lucifer and the other third thrown out of heaven. Friend, God is sovereign. He's going to do what he wants to do. When he made that statement, the Father alone knows. Not even the angels in heaven. When I began to pick up on this, there came a little surprise to me. Why? I can understand possibly why. He might want to keep it back from the terrestrial body, which is the earth earthy, because it makes so many failures and makes so many mistakes. Amen. It's often said that if you don't, if you want your best secret told around the world. Tell it to your best friend. There's just something about the earth earthy. Something about this body that's going to fail time after time. But why would he hold it back from the celestial being? Not even Michael, that great angel of war. Not even Gabriel, that great angel of messages. Even no will know until that moment. Gabriel will hear it the moment it's to happen. Until then God has held it back. Why has he done that? Why has he done that? Because there is a purpose and a reason for everything that God does. And he and he alone knows. But then went on to this point. What are the signs? First of all, let's talk about how this is going to affect the three kingdoms. Then I'm going to tell you why God is holding it back. Number one, the kingdom of Satan. He sees the signs of the times. Friend, let me tell you something. This is no time for the church to be sitting down. This is no time to be sitting on your hands. Because if you could only see what the demons were doing right now, every one of you would get the Holy Ghost before you leave this building. Demons are working overtime. Demons are working double time. Because they know something's about to happen. Amen, 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 amen. Because the Lord has held back the day and the hour, you are going to see the optimum come out of demons, the optimum come out of angels, and the optimum come out of the saints of the Most High God. Hang on now. Not even the demons know the hour, but they can read the signs of the times. And the Bible said in the book of Revelation, He's coming down with great wrath. Why? Because He knoweth that He hath but short, but just a little time. He don't know the hour, but honey, let me tell you something. He's working right now. He's doing double time, overtime. He's sweating up a storm to get you into hell. He'll do anything to keep you out of this altar, because He knows God's coming back soon. He can't put his finger on it, but the back of his hair on his head is, is, is standing up. His old horns are a matter of pointing right now. Amen. I know he don't look like that, but let my imagination run wild. He's, his eyes are darting to and forth. So he knows something about to happen. You think I'm going to sit here and have church as usual? No, never. Amen. The demons are going to come to their optimum in this last day. When I read the scripture and I see what Satan and his demons are going to do, friend, they are going to be at the best they can be. One thing you've got to say about the devil is he's always going to be a devil. I wish you could say a saint was always going to be a saint. Even demons understand what I'm created for. He was made to be an angel serving God, and now he fell from grace. He came out of that kingdom, and now he's a demon. Friend of mine, oh, that the church would wake up and say, I know what I'm made for. Hallelujah. Oh, those demons started high in the presence of God, and now they've come down. But we were down, and now God has brought us up. My Lord, help us. I know a lot of you are not going to hear me today, but I'm going to answer the reason why God knows, but he's not telling anybody. He's not telling anybody. He's not telling anybody. 
because he's going to see the optimum come of every situation. There is a scripture in the Old Testament that says until the cup of the Amorites were full, God must allow everything to do what it can do the best that it can before he comes and reveals how much they really needed him. The kingdom of angels, they have signs of times too. I believe the angels right now are busy taking care of all that's going to go on at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Matter of fact, the scripture tells me several passages. Number one, it says they shall go to and fro in the earth and they shall gather up the tares and bring them to be put in the fire, to prepare to put them in the fire. Then they're going to gather up the sheaves and they're going to be bringing them and gathering them together to be put in the barn. The angels, only God has righteous judgment. Amen. But the angels right now are busy saying, if you're going to get in, get in. If you're going to get out, then get out because there's a separation coming here you want to go to heaven here let me help you let's go to church now they can't preach the gospel but friend they can help encourage you to want to get up out of that bed the angel never knows when the trumpet might sound so he better be busy about the work of God you may, be, you may be seated. What is the work of God for an angel? The Bible calls it ministering spirits. It's there to say, you don't want God, then you go on your way. I can't help you. You want God here, let me help you on your way. And there's going to be a dividing. And the angels are going to be at their optimum right before the coming of the Lord. Because they're going to be sensitive. And they're going to be working at it. And they're going to be giving themselves to it. Angels are going to be sitting back saying, well, I'll tell you what. I heard he's going to come in the year two. 2002, and he's coming at 12.01 a.m. So I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to take my little rocking chair. Hang on, folks, we're going somewhere now. Put your thinking cap on, and don't let me lose you. Amen. That angel doesn't know what time it's going to be. And all they know right now is i got to do what i got to do. What God has put down inside of me. i got to be a part of this. If they die and go in the grave, at least I have a part of helping them get ready for the rapture. Don't look for a demon to be stepped in his rocking chair. He senses it. He feels it. He don't know the hour. He don't know the day. But they're coming to their optimum right now. They're moving to their apex of what they were made and called to do. Now, what are you doing? Demons are giving their best. What are you doing? It's getting quiet on me now. Angels are doing their best. What are you doing? Come on, what are you doing with your life? Have you, have you read your Bible this week? Come on, have you prayed through yet, sir? Have you gotten baptized in Jesus' name yet? Did you invite somebody to church? Come on, are you on fire? Have you got what it takes? Is something wrong? Is something going on in your life? Amen. I'm telling you, we act like we know the exact hour. Some of us are living like it's ten years away. Don't bother me, preacher. I know I'm not saved, but i got ten years before the Lord comes. Oh, you do? Then you know something I don't know. And you know something the devils don't know. And you know something the angels don't know. Only the Father in heaven knows it. What are you waiting on? You better come get in the church today. (laughs) You better come on talk in tongues today. You better come on let us baptize you in Jesus' name today. You better get on the firing line. Come on, saints. Are you doing what God's called you to do? You better get up and move. Maybe you know something I don't know. Woo. Well, Brother Clark, I tell you what. I've just been hearing it for so long. I just don't know if I really even believe it anymore. I've heard Jesus is coming for so long. I'm not even sure if he's going to come anymore. You better, you better, you better set up and take notice. This thing's going on in this whole world you ain't never seen in your lifetime. He said, "I'm going to tell you something. I will not answer the hour. I will not answer the day. But I'll give you some signs that you're going to know we're headed somewhere." Number one, he said, 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Two, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must uh, come to pass, but the end is not yet. Three, for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Four, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. They said more people are dying right now and being persecuted and killed because of religion than any other thing else in the earth. And then five, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Ever seen an hour like this hour? Six, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Seven, amen, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Eight, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness on the nations, and then shall the end come. Nine, when you see therefore the abomination of desolation Spoken up by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the holy place. Whosoever is, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. And let him which is on the mousetop not come down to anything and take anything out of his house. Hang on, folks. Jerusalem right now is fixing to start building its temple. This thing is fixing to come to pass. We don't know where in the middle of all this Jesus might come. He never gave us the day or the hour. But he said, I'm going to teach them this some signs. You're going to know. Something's about to happen in all the earth. They said we cry in peace, peace, safety. But we got war everywhere you look in the earth right now. You've never seen a day like this day. You've never seen an hour like this hour. Everything is telling everybody, whatever you're called to do, you better do it. If you're going to be a devil, you better be a good devil. If you're going to be an angel, you better be a great angel. If you're going to be a saint, you better be a saint. And if you don't want to be ready for the sound of the trumpet, mister, you better go drink up, shoot up, sin up. You better get it done while you can get it done. Because it's almost over. But I beckon to you. Lay it down. It's not worth it. It's time to give your life to God. Amen, amen, amen. I want you, if you will, to pick up your Bible again. I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. If you will, if you don't have a Bible, please look on with someone. I want you to hear this. This is something that you need to hear. Amen. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and the 33rd verse. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Read in the 40th verse. Again, there are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another of the moon, and another glory of the stars. One different from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is a sown a natural body, but is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written that the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. That's Jesus. Howbeit, that was not the first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And after Word, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. As it is in the earthy, such are they that are earthy. And as it is in the heavenly, such are they that are also heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Behold, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. My God, have mercy. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God has something for you. 
God has something for you. We were liars. We were gamblers. We were drunkards. We were dope addicts. We did everything under the sun. But we have been sanctified. We have been justified by the Spirit of the Lord and by the name of Jesus. Aren't you glad you've been changed? Aren't you glad you've been changed? Aren't you glad you've been changed? That got exciting to some of you. Let's go back to Matthew. Jesus said this. I want you to know that when I come, it's going to be in an hour that you think not. Hallelujah. He said, and I want you to understand this. It's going to be like the good men of the house. Had he known in what hour that the thief would have come and broke up his house. He said he'd have been setting up. He'd had his double barrel shotgun sawed off, double art book in it. He'd had lights on. He'd have been waiting for him to come through the door. Boom. He'd have blown him right through those doors. Amen. He said because if he'd have known. But hang on. There's something in here that most people never catch. He said, I want you to understand in an hour that you think not. He said, listen to me. The man that comes would be like a thief. And the man who would know the hour would be setting up waiting on him. Let me take this a little further. The reason I'm not telling you the day or the hour is because every day you live, hang on to what you got. Love your house. Love your soul. If some of you knew the hour, you'd keep on sinning until an hour before that hour. You know what he wants? He wants somebody that wants to be ready right now. If it takes 10 years, fine. If it takes 20 years, fine. I'm sick of hearing people say this. When I see it's time to get in, I'll get in. You don't understand the concept of this. Jesus was saying to them, if I was going to be a thief and was going to come steal from you, and you knew the hour, then you would meet me and do me harm. But I'm coming as your Savior in an hour that you know not. And I'm making you a good man of the house. I am. I am. Amen. I want you to understand this. I know we preach that and I know we think about that. But really we need the relationship of God isn't coming to do us harm. But whatever He does in His life, He's doing it for our good. He says, I'm going to make you the good man over the house. I'm going to set you over the house. And here's the concept I want you to have. You don't know when I'm coming. You don't know when I'm coming down the road. You don't know when I'm coming this way. So what I want you to do is be ready. Morning, noon, and night. Be ready. Take care of the house. What is the house? It's this body. No, you're not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're the good man over this. My God, you got to take care of this. Don't give it to sin. Don't give it to debauchery. God knows, but He's not telling. Why? Because He knows the spirit of that terrestrial body. He knows what you will do. Is it not our way? Sir, ma'am, God's been dealing with you to come in the church. Are you going to wait for it to get so bad? There's some of you saints that are here. You remind me of some children. They can't lay down and go to sleep till they get a good spanking. Look at me. Talk to me now. You feel like if God just doesn't raise up and get in your face, that He doesn't really love you. That's not His object. He doesn't want to do that. Why do you keep pushing Him with your ways and your sins? Why do you think you can do what you want to do? No, God loves you so much. He's made you the good man of the house. And He wants you to get busy because you don't know the hour when He's coming back. He wants you praying. He wants you fasting. He wants you reading His Word. He wants you witnessing. It's time to have a revival. This church has got to stir itself now. It may be 20 years. 
It might be 10 years. It might be one year. It might be 20 minutes. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to be doing everything I can to the optimum. I'm going to shout. I'm going to worship. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to serve Him. Why won't He tell us? Why won't God tell us? Because if He told us, we're so lazy and rotten to the core that we would wait till that very minute to finally get up and say, Oh God, I love you. I worship you. Now save me. That's not His principle. I want you to look, if you will. You don't have to look back in the Scripture, but I want you to look back with me in your mind to the Scripture that I read to you. He said, I'm going to leave you with something. <laughs> and he said, you don't know when the woman of the house is going to come back. He said, and this is the purpose of why this is going to occur the way it's going to occur. That you might have meat in due season. I don't know what that means, Brother Clark. That means if it's morning, you got bacon eggs on the table. Yeah. That means if it's noon, you got yourself a noon meal. That means if it's evening and supper time, you got meat in due season. That means whatever time it is in your life, whatever you're new in the church, if you've been in here for a long time, whether you've been serving God for 10 minutes or for 10 years, there's going to be meat in due season. You're going to have something at that time when God comes by, when a need comes by, whenever somebody has need of whatever you got in your life, you're going to be the good man. You're going to be on fire. Oh, somebody says, I need help. Wait a minute. Let me run to Austin Tabernacle. Here, Brother Clark, preach one more time. Get pumped up again, and I'll run back here and give you what you need. No, right at that moment, you have an answer for this hope that lies within you. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they're going to cast out devils. They're going to lay hands on the sick, and they shall be healed. Woo! Hallelujah! I'm passing by. Have you got anything? Yes, come on in. God understands that if He gave us the day or the hour, we wouldn't go out and put the seed in the ground. We wouldn't hoe up the weeds. We wouldn't work with the cycle of life. We'd wait to that exact moment. That's why he told the natural Jews, you better pray, Jews, that when I come, it's not winter time for you. You better pray, natural Jews, that it ain't winter time. Because when it hits you, you're going to be running. You're going to be running for Petra. You're going to be running for your very life. Come on, church. Now let's look at this in our own spiritual endeavors. Whatever he said to the natural Jew, we better pick up and listen. Because there's some things handed down to us in the Spirit. You better not be caught with no meat in due season. I don't care if it's howling winds outside. There'll be better be a hot fire burning there in the fireplace. And there better be some meat sizzling. And there better be some fire that is there. Because what I just read to you, the next set of Scripture right down was the ten virgins. Five for wise and five for foolish. God said, get it and get a hold of it and get ready. I'm ready now. I'm ready at midnight. I'm ready tomorrow. I'm ready on Wednesday. I'm ready on Friday. When the devil comes along and says, how about a bud? I said, get out of my way, sir. Oh, get out of my way. I'm going to put this body down one day. Sodom and Gomorrah was about to get it. The Lord was walking with two angels. While they were passing by, Abram got up out of the tent and ran out through that dusty winding road and met those angels and God out in the middle of that road. Come on in. Come on in. Come on home with me. And when he got him home, he said, Go get the fatty calf. Go get the choice calf. Bring it in. We, I, I didn't know God was coming by with two angels. 
I didn't know he was headed down to Sodom and Gomorrah. I didn't know something was fixing to happen down. Where are you? Where are you going, Sodom and Gomorrah? What's happening down there? Let's eat first. My, my, my. God didn't need a piece of cow. Come on. Those angels didn't need a hind quarter. Give me a break. They were celestial, but they sat down with the terrestrial and had patience to let God's will be worked out. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He wasn't talking about meeting the natural in Matthew that I read to you. He was talking about some spiritual things. Well, we got some Sodom tomorrows that are in trouble. Is there a church somewhere? Is there a man or a woman somewhere? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Live on. I know I've lost a lot of you. You're just sitting there looking at me. What's he talking about? Can I tell you something? Celestial doesn't need anything, but the terrestrial can give it. But the celestial has patience that God's will can be done in our lives. And when they ate the calf, then the Lord turned to the angel and said, Shall I tell him what I'm about to do? And God broke bread in spirit. Abram did not know. He had no idea that Sodom Gomorrah was about to get it. But because he had meat in due season, the celestial could be entertained and mixed with the terrestrial. Who la kapul shabbat? You're sitting here on the pew and cannot even comprehend what is all around you. Sir, you're so hung up on one little sin when all heaven is all around you. Saint, you're battling with this little flesh. One day we're going to put it down and it's going to come out. You got any meat in the house? Got any meat in the house? What's the season? I've got meat for every season. Oh, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Shall I tell him what I'm about to do? Shall I tell him what I'm about to do? Woo! He got to talk to my My God, church, if you can't feel this, something's gone wrong. The glory of the Lord is in this building. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody praise him. Somebody worship him. Somebody give him glory. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift your hands and praise it. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, my God. Clap your hands to the Lord again. Ooh. And if it was here. Then it could talk about she could talk about Yonder and Balanda Vasea. Why? Why won't you tell us? Why won't you give us the hour and the day? Come on, church, praise Him. What's wrong, God? Don't you really love us? Why won't you tell us that you might have meat in due season? Maybe sit in Oh, 
Because if I told you when, you would wait till then to have the revival that I want you to have right now. Because if you knew then, then you would hold off for right now for what I have for your life. The scripture says, he that hath this hope within himself, purifieth himself. In the book of Thessalonians, God said, if you have this hope, hallelujah, that the natural is going to be going to come out of the grave and it's going to rise and going to have a new body, then I'll tell you what you'll do. You will start preparing yourself. I, I, I need to close. I need to stop. I need just to go ahead. You know why? He won't tell you the day or the hour. Because he wants Christ formed in you. (laughs) Before we're ever raised incorruptible, that corruption... It's going to begin to feel meat in due season in this house. The disciples said, we've been to town. We brought back some food. He said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. My God, hallelujah, that in this life right now, Christ in you, the hope of glory, that is meat in due season. We shall see Him as He is, and we shall be like Him. Come on, somebody. Oh. Hey, sir. Here's the middle light coming up. Sliding down the bar. Sloshing sun everywhere. Drink him up. No. Not me. Not you, because you have an answer. Sorry, meat in due season. Why get drunk on Miller Light while I'm drunk on the Holy Ghost? Where'd you get it? I got it on the day of Pentecost. How did it happen? Oh, I was a praising God. Oh, the seed of the resurrection. It got down inside of me. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Clap your hands. 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 Woo! Daddy looked out that dusty road. Here come that old boy with mud all over him. He just got by the pig's pen and he's coming home. He says, somebody, go kill the fatty cat. We're fixing to have a party in the house. My God, church, Jesus had not come yet, but the children are coming home. We've got to have meat in due season. Everybody pray right now. Mm, you got to pray right now. i got to quit. Woo. i got to quit. I ain't through. i got to quit. Mm. Somebody clap your hands. Somebody weep before the Lord. Somebody pray. Lift your hands and pray. When Zion travails. Come on, Zion. Lift your hands and travail. Lift your hands and travail. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. God knows, but he ain't telling. Why? Because he's going to see who will and who won't. He's going to see 
who's going to have meat in due season. Pray, church. I want you to help me pray now. Mm. Reach over and lay your hand on somebody's shoulder. Young person, pray for a young person. Brother, pray for a brother. Come on, church, pray. 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 Mm. Somebody got to come get the Holy Ghost. Pray. Somebody got to break out of that shell. Pray. Somebody got to get a hold of this. Pray, church. Pray, saints. Oh, God. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. I'm opening this altar. Somebody, you want some meat and juices. I want you to get out of that pew. I want you to come up here and I want you to touch God. Somebody wants some meat and juices. Somebody want to be ready for the rapture. It's coming, sir. It's going to sound. It's going to be a mighty trumpet. God's coming for this church. Are you ready? You better hurry. Come on, sir. You come too. Sir, you come too. Ma'am, you come too. You can be him by Get up here, with your hands. Bring somebody with you. I want to be ready. To be I want to be more like him. To do his best command. Come on, keep coming. Come on, keep coming. Come on, keep coming. And glory And soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Pray, everybody, pray right now. Pray, everybody, pray right now. We're going to see the King. Pray, church, I want you to pray right now. Oh, my, my, my. There they come. Come on, here they come. Come on, here they come. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. Come on down. Come on down. Keep coming. Keep coming. You better come pray. Come on, you better come pray. You better come pray. You better come pray. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Backslider, lift your hands and pray on through. Visitor, lift your hands and pray on through. My, my, my. Not that slow. (laughs) Oh, I got to pray. I got to go talk to God. Come on, everybody, the Holy Ghost is here. I ought to
Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on, church. Meet in this season. Meet in this season. Meet in this season. Come on, saints. Come on. Come on, young people. Look up and show that. To do his blessing, man. Oh, yes, I want to be ready to meet. In the Lord, we let. Oh, it's soon and very soon. We are going to see. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's hold it. Let's hold it. Let's hold it. It's Holy Ghost. It's Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, everybody. Come on, saints. I want to be ready. We are going to see the King. I want to be ready. I am going to be the King. It's time. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Go Hallelujah. Go to see the King. I want to be ready. Meet in due season. Go to see Meet in due season. Meet in due season. I want to be ready. 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 Meet in due season. Come on, everybody. Come on, church. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We are going to see the king. I want to be ready. I want everybody in the building lift your hands right now and let the anointing of the Holy Ghost fall on you. Mm. Get ready. The Lord to my house. The house in order today. The house in order today. I want you to lift your hands right now and let the anointing of the Holy Ghost fall on you. Let it fall on you. Let the anointing of God fall on you. Get ready. There it is. There it is. Hala baha. Koko do do si la pokoshi. Marisa to nunu kana na do ho si. Hala baha sai. Go ahead. Let the anointing of The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings unto the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then walk in the new life, study and grow. Become a servant of righteousness. 
Keep self pure. Be an example. Have faith in God. Follow Jesus. Put first things first. Resist temptation. Be faithful and be fruitful.